After this shot that we're doing now, we get to, we cut directly to Calvin saying, uh, now just in case anybody is wearing a heater, everybody strip down to the underwear ladies too. Now, just in case somebody's wearing a heater, everybody strip down to their underwear. Ladies included. Move it. Cut. <laughs> Sorry about that, fellas. Cameras roll on Sidney Poitier's first comedy caper, Uptown Saturday Night. Okay, and when you pan him down, hold, uh, hold the bandstand and the women beyond it. A church picnic sequence calls for cast and crew to move from Uptown to Out of Town. Oscar winner Sidney Poitier stars in the film, of course, but he is also the director. You set, Owen? Roll it! We're rolling. And... Action! Pat and Fred. Actor, director. An assignment very few in the movie industry would dare to undertake. It's difficult to split yourself into so many parts. It's hard. Uh, physically and, and mentally. Artistically, it's troublesome, too, because uh, there are certain creative areas that overlap uh, of necessity when one person is trying to function in all these areas. But Poitier took on this massive job because he had a plan. <laughs> Movie makers know that every film takes on its own peculiar personality. It's kind of a magic composite of all the artists and technicians involved in the production. A kind of family affair. And when that baby is finally delivered, there's a little bit of everyone in its bones. It's rarely a matter of luck. It's something that must be carefully planned. And when you bring these creative people together, then you get the ingredients of a good motion picture. Sometimes a great picture. Let's do it. Screwdrivers in. Right. And that was Sidney Poitier's plan for Uptown Saturday Night. Bring together a group of great artists who are also great friends, like Harry Belafonte. Uh, I had not worked with Sidney since we did Buck and the Preacher. So that was of great joy to me. And then to find out that so many of my other friends, Bill Cosby, Flip Wilson, Richard Pryor, Roscoe Lee Brown, were all going to be in it. Uh, made for a rather unique set of circumstances. Bill Cosby. Well, uh, the reason why I got involved with this movie is because uh, Sidney uh, is my friend. He called me up and asked me to be in it. And that's the last time I'll ever answer the phone for him again. Richard Pryor. He called me up on the phone, told me Bill Cosby and Harry Belafonte. He told me I better take the part or they kill me. Here, my main man. You gotta relax here. Don't ask me about those fools. Absolutely insane. Nuts. Crazy. You told me I could go home if I was good at 2 o'clock and I'd be good. But Sydney, I have a, see, I have to go to... Uh, about a half stem of each one. Didn't I have some place? <laughs> no, you ain't got no place to go. <laughs> I'm very fortunate, however, to have been able to assemble such a compilation of lunatics. Uh, fortunately for me, they, they thought enough of me to come and work for me. Okay, I've gotten guys. some performances, I think, that borders on the greatness that most of them represent. As an example, I think, for instance, Harry Belafonte's performance is classic. Harry Belafonte as Godfather Geechee Dan. Everything's gone wrong. They didn't get the diamonds. The rival mobster, Calvin Lockhart. But they got busted. And one of them talked. Yeah, they just busted into my apartment with a warrant for both of us. Somebody did talk. I think you'll be better get out of here so we can kind of talk this thing over. Yeah. Uh-oh. Constituents. Yes. Roscoe Lee Brown, a congressman in search of a constituency. Richard Pryor gets his first chance in a comedy role as the neurotic private detective, Sharp Eye Washington. That's right. It's a lonely, dangerous life being a private detective. All you do is risk a little money. I solve the cases, and people after me. 
Look at my eye. My right eye. See how? My right eye. See how bloodshot it is? You know I got that way? From sleeping with one eye open, baby. Life ain't easy. Always on the move? People after me with guns. That's right, looking under the hood of your car for bombs, peeking out windows, peering down hallways. The day I worked with Richard Pryor, I kept breaking up. I couldn't hold a straight face, you know. I almost went into old time because the man kept me laughing so much. I couldn't attend to any of my duties as an actor or director because he was so funny. Go ahead, man, come on Shut up! You know them cats was gonna shoot me? Well, I didn't shoot have war down. Either, you know. Mistook me for some ugly dude with a beard and a mustache. I can understand Shut how they go. up! Now I forgot my line. <laughs> <laughs> and Bill Cosby, of course, runs right through the picture. Right. As funny behind the scenes as he is in the scenes. This is close up on us. When you direct your picture, it'll be a close up on you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Paula Kelly has fun with the role of Leggy Peggy. Now, Paula Kelly, now you're talking about one of the most interesting people in this film. She's soft. Bill Cosby, of course, you can't do a straight scene with because he's making you laugh all the time. Nine all right. That's right. Teach him to respect the sister, sister. Send all of them to the pawn shop. Hey, change the dice, man. Hell no! If you can't stand the heat, get out the kitchen. Harry S. Truman, December 17th, 1952, honey. I got you. <laughs> I want you, food. Okay. Friendship of yeah, a very go. special kind. Admiration. Respect for each other's talent. Trust in each other's professionalism. To be with my dear friends, to be in a picture that I like, to be doing something that I've never done before, which is comedy, and to, uh... And to have had an opportunity to go way out in, in a characterization such as the one that I portray in this picture. With, uh, with all the things that you've seen that have gone to change my features. Uh, it makes for the kind of thing that I think most actors or most people in the performing arts uh, get an opportunity to do once in a lifetime. I think the film is going to have the quality of a, almost of a fantasy, a fantasy caper farce, um, with all these characters that are somewhat exaggerated, drawn from something real. This is a comedy that I think um, people, for the first time in a long, long time, are going to be able to slap their leg, their own leg as opposed to porno movie houses where they slap other people's legs. I've never worked with more talented people, ever. My compatriots, my contemporaries, my friends, my fellow workers, they came and they, they laid themselves in my hands as uh, the director. I, I think that's the greatest reward I've ever reaped in my life. Well, but I would say that the one distinct thing about it is that you are a great character actor, I am funny, and Sydney has great posture. All right, now, let's cook it. Let's cook it. Saturday night is what happens when good friends have a great time making a funny movie.